Welcome to our Bible study this afternoon. This is now the second part of what we have studied about the work of preparation. There is a big need, a greatest need of all time, is for us to participate in the work of preparation. But before we go into the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, let us bow our heads in order prayer. Heavenly Father, be with us this afternoon as we study about the work of preparation that we must participate and we must engage. Be with us and give us the wisdom. Help us in our preparation because we are living in this time of trouble. We are living where the crisis is just about to fall on us. Forgive us from all our sins. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we will look at the Bible and we will look at the spirit of prophecy according to what really our need and where we are in the spring of time. We need to understand and we need to know so that when we come to the point of no buying, no selling, when you come to a point of crisis that never since there was a nation, we are all prepared and ready to work for the Lord. So it is important that we look at this work of preparation. Because God has given us enough time. In fact, we have just enough time to make a preparation in this very short period of time. We are running out of time. And we are now in the time of preparation. But I would like to bring your attention in the work of preparation based on the Day of Atonement. Now the prophet of the Lord had said in the book Great Controversy, I would like to bring you to that book, The Great Controversy. She wrote this book right after 1844. And we as Seventh-day Adventists believe that 1844 is the beginning of the work of Christ in the most holy place, His high priestly ministry. And it says, We are now living in the great day of atonement. So she is referring us to the one of the feasts in the Old Testament that every Israelite must participate in this Day of Atonement. And she continues, In the typical service, while the high priest was making the atonement for Israel, all will required, all were required. All of them, every single one of them, no exemption. All were required to afflict their souls by repentance of sin and humiliation before the Lord, lest they be cut off from among the people. She is referring us back to the Day of Atonement celebrated in the Old Testament. So let's go and visit the Old Testament Bible. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 23 in verse 27. Let's check it out. Let's investigate. Let's have a look. What is that Day of Atonement that she is referring to that we are now living in this Day of Atonement? Now, Chapter 23 of Leviticus in verse 27 is the festival, is the feast of the Day of Atonement. In verse 27, so we will be reading from verse 27, 28, 29, and 30. Let's go in verse 27. It says, Also, on the tenth day of, the, of this seventh month, a day of atonement. 
So every seven month of each year and on the 10th day is the day of atonement, once a year. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So the people, the children of Israel, must participate, and in their participation is that they will afflict their soul. They will have a soul searching, setting aside, confessing, repenting of every deeds, every wrong deeds, every sin that they have done. Verse 28. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. At one month, atonement, once a year, there is a Sabbath and no work for everyone, but they will afflict their soul. So in this day, Either you participate or not participate. Verse 29, Leviticus 23 in verse 29, the next verse. For whatsoever soul that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Now, this day of atonement is very crucial to every soul in the camp. Either they will be cut off if they will not participate or they will participate and be part of that community. Ellen G. White, she said that in the time we are in now, we are living. She said it after 1844 that we are living on the Day of Atonement. And every soul will afflict themselves waiting, looking for the high priests performing the tasks. Now the high priests will perform the ceremony. The people will be outside the tabernacle. The whole tabernacle is covered with curtain. They will only listen to the noises of the bells at the hem of the high priest, making sure that the high priest is still alive. They are not seeing what the high priest is doing. The children of Israel will participate this day of atonement by faith. By faith, because they can see nothing about what the high priest is doing, but they will only listen to what is happening inside the tabernacle when the high priest will walk in the courtyard into the holy place and into the most holy place by just listening to the bells. Today, as what the prophet of the Lord said, that we are living on the Day of Atonement, we have the high priests. This high priest is no longer bringing a blood of a lamb or blood of an animal, but he's bringing his own blood. So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2 in verse 30. You see, Acts chapter 2 is during the day of the Pentecost. This is what we can read from this chapter. Acts chapter 2 in verse 30. And it says, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, According to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. 
Now, Jesus becoming now our high priest. And he is seated on the, in his throne. On the Father's throne. Now, verse 31. Acts chapter 2 in verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. You see, Jesus did not remain in the grave. His flesh did not see corruption. In verse 32, and Jesus did not stay there on the grave. In verse 32, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. So on that day of resurrection, in verse 33, on that resurrection, the disciples becomes the eyewitnesses of this resurrection. And not only the disciples, but many others that have seen Jesus before his ascension to heaven. Verse 33, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. So now we see the high priests. Now we hear the high priests. Jesus is now our high priest in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Acts chapter 7 and verse 49. <clears throat> so let's go to the book of Acts and then let's go to the book of Hebrews. But this time we'll read the book of Acts chapter 7 in verse 49. Acts chapter 7 verse 49. Because many would say and many would ask, what is Jesus? So it says here, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? So there is heaven that the Bible has said. You see, in our next presentation, there is an enemy that will omit the word heaven. That there is no heaven at all. In fact, we had to live in this planet sustainably. So maybe many of you are very aware of the word sustainability. That is the sting of the devil so that our mind will be diverted from heaven in which Jesus our high priest is seated on the right hand side of the throne of the Father doing what? So this is the work of preparation but we can only participate in the work of preparation when we know where Jesus is. So let's go in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 4 so now for verse 16 so now heaven is Jesus' throne, and this earth is his footstool. So now let's go in Hebrews chapter 4 in verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Paul is indicating that one day we need of help. When the crisis will come to this planet earth, when everybody is looking for a sustainable living, when everybody is imposing a build, build, build principle, ideology, we know that it will end up in destruction. When people will cry for peace and then a sudden destruction, the Bible has given us an assurance that let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Friends, mercy is available today. One day, mercy won't be available. We call it the close of probation. 
So Jesus now is in the throne, seated at the throne, at the right hand side of the Father. So that we can obtain, we can obtain mercy. And let us come boldly before the throne. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 in verse 1. So when we come to his throne boldly, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. So now we have an high priest. You see, Ellen G. White, the prophet of God, said in the past that we are now living under the hour of the day of atonement. We have the high priests. Jesus becomes our high priest. So that when he becomes a high priest, Jesus will bring us to the Father. Who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So now it is very clear in the Bible that we have Jesus, our high priest, seated on the throne. He is now our high priest. So let's go in Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 2. Now Jesus is sitting at the right hand side of the Father of the throne in the heavens, in the majesty of the heavens. And it says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Now friends, in this work of preparation, it is important that we must and we should know where Jesus is. There are many Christians claiming today that they were Christians, but they were not following Jesus. In fact, they don't know where Jesus is. But for us, students of the Bible, we know where Jesus is. So now we'll follow Jesus where he is. So we are looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and a sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we have this sure assurance that when we look to Jesus, He will finish our faith and He will start our faith. This is what we call righteousness by faith. The righteousness by faith is the work of Christ that we follow at His work and what we as people in our work of preparation, Jesus is performing the day of atonement and we, his people, we are afflicting our soul. And we must participate. Afflicting our soul is what we call repentance. We will repent. We will confess our sins. If we confess our sins, He will forgive us from our, our sins. Repentance. Repentance is that we shun the wrong and do the right. There must be a point in time, brothers and sisters, that we must stop sinning. We cannot continue to sin and yet confess that we are followers of Jesus. We must stop sinning. And not because of what we can do. But our high priest is performing our righteousness. He is now doing our righteousness. In the day of atonement, it is the high priest that will clothe that will clothe himself with the clothes of the high priest. And it's the high priest that Jesus at the same time is our high priest. He clothed himself, the humanity and the divinity, and performing as the high priest. And on the day of the Pentecost, he was inaugurated and accepted his sacrifice. Now he is not only a high priest, but at the same time, 
our lamb. So Jesus is your and my lamb, and Jesus is your high priest and my high priest, meaning he purchased us, he redeemed us from sin, and then he brings us to the Father to present to the Father. Let's go to the book of um, Ephesians chapter 5. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5 in verse 27. Ephesians chapter 5 in verse 27. This is how Paul described how Jesus will present us to the Father. It says that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Now, it says not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, this verse clearly tells us that we must stop living in sin. If we really true believers of Jesus and followers of Jesus, we must stop Sinning, in the other words, an obedient child of God. This is verse 27 in summary. For you and for me to be part of this glorious church that will be presented, that Christ will present it to himself as a glorious without any spot or blemish or any wrinkle or any of such things, we are obedient not only to some law but all of the Ten Commandments. As a glorious church, when we go to the book of Revelation, it is clear that the Church of Christ is having the testimony of Jesus and keeping God's commandments. Revelation 12, 17. So to be part of this God's glorious church is we are and we must be an obedient child. Stop being disobedience. By being an obedient child of God, you are keeping God's commandments especially the Ten Commandments. And in the middle of the Ten Commandments is the keeping of the Sabbath. Because the Day of Atonement is a Sabbath. Not because it is a seventh-day Sabbath, but it is a day wherein no work. Because Christ will work for you. Sabbath is not a day to work because Christ is working for you. He works for you. And our part is to participate, is to engage in this work. We keep the Sabbath not because it is our own right, but it is His righteousness. Righteousness by faith. We keep the, we keep the Sabbath as a righteousness by faith that we are saved by Christ. We don't use the Sabbath as our way of be being uh, work um, to work or to earn our own salvation. So let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 14 in verses 1 to 5. Paul describes the glorious church without spot or blemish. Now, John the Revelator, John in the book of Revelation, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to describe this church of Christ. Revelation chapter 14 in verse 1. And this is where the work of preparation that you and I must take heed. And let's study this bit by bit. 
Now, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, in verse 2. So now you have this 144,000 stood with the Lamb. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters and as the voice of the great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harper harping with her harps. Verse 3. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne. You see, this 144,000, we are told that they are now before the throne. You see, we must understand that when we approach Jesus in his throne that we will obtain mercy, we are here on planet earth and Jesus is in the heavenly places. But when we come to his throne, even though we are on earth, but Spiritually, we are in the front of the throne of God in the heavens. So in verse 3, And they sang as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. You see, the blood of the Lamb redeemed us from the earth in verse 4. So the blood that Jesus is our lamb and Jesus is our high priest. This is the activity in the 144,000 in chapter 14 in the book of Revelation. Now in verse 4, these are they. Now, now John begins to describe these people who will participate in this great day of atonement. It says, they were not defiled with women. In the Bible, women means church. They were not defiled. But there are many churches. You see, there's only one pure woman. But there are many offspring of the harlot in the book of Revelation Chapter 18, he, she is the mother. So the woman here, it's plural, were the daughters of the harlot. This 144,000 has come out and been washed by the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus looked at them as if they have never seen. That's why they were considered they were not defiled with women, for they were virgins. You see, there were, five, there were ten virgins in the book of Matthew chapter 25. So they were virgins. They were part of those wise virgins. They have come out of this harlot. These are they, in verse 4, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Friends, do you follow Jesus wherever he goeth? Jesus never go to a cinema. Jesus never go to a nightclub. Jesus didn't go into a beer, beer house garden. Neither in a boxing ring. Let us stop any of these such things that is not fit for the people of God waiting for His return. Because we have to do the work of preparation. Never in the record of the Day of Atonement that the children of Israel during the Day of Atonement were doing holidays and seeing going to Hawaii or going to places where they can enjoy their lives. No, friends, no, no. In this great day of atonement, 
it is very clear that we had to cast away all sins. We must stop sinning. Let's focus on the heavenly places that Jesus prepared. Because on this day, if you will not participate on the day of atonement, it is clear the Bible say will be cut off. Will be cut off. Follow the Lamb. Follow Jesus. It is Jesus' culture. It is Jesus' custom that every Sabbath he goes to the synagogue. And no Saturday night going in a nightclub. These were redeemed from among men. The first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Jesus is not a party goer that wasting his time and energy by not saving a soul. Jesus participating in any party. Jesus is not a killjoy society person. Jesus a very social person. He joined in the wedding. He goes into a party. But when he goes in, he is saving his soul and saving other souls healing and proclaiming the good news of salvation. In verse 5, Revelation chapter 14 in verse 5, and in their mouth was found no guile. Friends, very important that let's protect our words and our mouth. In this work of preparation, not only that we will prepare our soul, but as well as our words that will come out from our mouth. It is very important that the words that will come out from your mouth must be a flavor that will take a person from life to life or from glory to glory. But if your words of your mouth can offend the very least of these and it's become a flavor that will bring death to death you are not doing the work of preparation and the last and the last phrase of verse 5 for they are without fault before the throne of god the people who participates in the great day work of atonement, in the great day of preparation, these 144,000, this group of people and their description and their qualities is what we should be we doing without fault before God. We must stop living in sin. The work of preparation is for us to live the life of Christ, that we will put on Christ, that we will not follow the dictates of our flesh, but we will follow the dictates of God. Now, the work of preparation is an individual work. I would like to bring you back to the great controversy. Great controversy in page 489. We are now living in the great day of atonement. It is my prayer this afternoon that as we go into the Bible, we become an obedient child. child of God. We are now living in the great day of atonement. In the typical service, while the high priest was making the atonement for Israel, all were required to afflict their souls by repentance of sin. Sin no more. And humiliation before the Lord lest they be cut off from among the people. 
in like manner, all who would have their names retained in the book of life should now, in the few remaining days of their probation, afflict their souls before God by sorrow for sin and true repentance. There must be deep, faithful searching of hearts. Friends, today, when you hear this voice, there must be a deep searching of our hearts. The light, frivolous spirit indulged by so many professed Christians must be put away. You see, the 144,000 not defiled by women. Professed Christians must be put away. Do not have the Christians display and there is no power thereof. Having the form of Christianity but there is no power. All that, the profession of our Christianity must be put away. We are now to live in the shadow of these remaining days of the probation because at the end of the day of atonement, those who will not participate, the Bible is very clear, and you cannot change it, will be cut off. And she continues, there is earnest warfare before all who would subdue the evil tendencies that strive for the mastery. Today, we are participating in the war. It's not Ukraine and Russia war. It's not even the Taiwan and China war in the South China Sea. This is not the war that God is preparing His people. but a war that will subdue all the evil tendencies so that it will not become our master. But the power of the Holy Spirit will be the master of our life. Now, she continues, the work of preparation is an individual work. Individually, we will do the work of preparation. We are not saved in groups. The purity and devotion of one who will not offset the want of these qualities in another, though all nations are to pass in judgment before God, yet he will examine the case of each individual with as close as searching scrutiny as if there were not another being upon the earth. Friends, from 1844, Jesus is investigating the dead. We don't know the time as to when the investigation of the dead will end. But when that will end, Jesus will begin to investigate the living. And when the living is investigated, then there would be a time of trouble. We are living in a few days of probation. Everyone, everyone must be tested and found without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Everyone. When is... When would be the testing? The testing would be when the implementation of the no buying and selling, when the Sunday law is implemented, that would be the final test. But there would be a little test before the final test. You see, in college, there would be a final test. Even to some of you have a degree back overseas, we had a final test. 
but in every month of the year of the of the course of the year there is a test a small test building up up to the final test so there are little tests we must stand on the little tests because on the final tests and many of us will assume let's wait and see and when that no buying or selling will come then i will be faithful to the lord maybe you will not <coughs> maybe you will not <coughs> there is a work of preparation that we must engage now and this work of preparation is an individual work therefore my appeal to you my dear beloved is i would like to invite you earnestly humbly prayerfully participate in this work of preparation but when you participate in the work of preparation view back the day of atonement and view forward the work of christ for you and for me in that heavenly places we must follow the footsteps of jesus christ we must know where Jesus is Sunday keeping is not following the footsteps of Jesus but it is following the enemy of Jesus it is the antichrist it is the man of sin because in the time of trouble when there is no buying and no selling then there is a worship that will be enforced and on that time and on that day there would be a distinguishable mark either those who will follow the lamb or those who will follow the mark of the beast this work of preparation jesus had outlined this for us so that we will be prepared and aware would you be part would you participate in this work of preparation if this is your desire let us pray our heavenly father thank you for the information about the work of preparation let me and let us view the work of the high priest in the day of atonement in the old testament and the work of christ as the high priest that brought us to the father without spot and wrinkle and blemish because Jesus has purchased us with his blood at the cross we come boldly before your throne and we claim your promises we come before your throne so that we can obtain mercy so when the time of need will arise there is protection and there is redemption and salvation for us and so father thank you for giving us your word forgive us from all our sins so that we can participate earnestly as we afflict our soul in this great day of atonement so that our preparations will be complete and may be complete in jesus christ we pray amen